the Lord. Once again, I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Sunday worship service today in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God will reach every heart, enlighten everyone, and do good in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you because you are a God of love, a God of mercy, and yet a God of judgment. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we look at your word today, you send your word forth into every life and let it penetrate every heart in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, all we need to do that will escape the final judgment. You help us and lead us so we can escape in Jesus' name. We pray that nobody will be careless of their own soul. We pray that nobody will forget that the judgment day is coming and all who reject Christ, who neglect their salvation, will face that judgment on that great, cheerful, and fearful day. We pray, O oh Lord, you help us today to take in your word and to act on the word and to believe and to live the way you want us to live, to glorify your name and prepare for that glorious day in Jesus' name. Bless everyone today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Revelation chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, and we're looking at verse 11. It says, And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And then in verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, according to their faith, according to their character, according to their lifestyle at this time of probation on earth. They were judged according to the things that were written according to their works. And then in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, every man, every man, without the exception, small and great, young and old, they were judged, every man, according to their works. And then in verse 14, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. In verse 15, it tells us, And whosoever, young or old, and whosoever, man or woman, and whosoever, from the first generation until the final generation, and whosoever, in the church, outside the church, and whosoever, religious or not religious, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Romans chapter 3, we're looking at verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then in verse 24 it says, being justified freely. There is justification. There is salvation. There is conversion. There is the mercy of God coming to the penitent, repentant, sorrowful sinner, turning away from sin and coming to the Lord. The Lord forgives and the Lord says, at this time, being justified freely by his grace 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus in verse 25 whom God has set forth to be a propitiation that Christ the Father the Almighty has set him forth before the final judgment comes he sends a redeemer he sends a savior he sends someone that will pay for our sin the substitute for everyone the sacrifice for everyone the savior for everyone the sanctifier for everyone the father god in heaven has set him forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. There's the forbearance of God. That's the reason why He has given us all this time, all this period, many generations waiting for everyone because He's not willing that anyone shall perish. He has long suffering. He has forbearance, he has mercy, and he's saying, why will you die? Not only O house of Israel, but everyone in the world, why will you die? Since Christ has come for us as Savior, as substitute, as the final sacrifice, the acceptable sacrifice. Is now telling us that because the forbearance of God is there, is pleading with everyone that we turn that we repay, that we get saved, and we give ourselves unreservedly and totally, wholeheartedly unto the Lord, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Look at that. The remission of sins that are past the eternal security people tell you, they say he has forgiven all your sins, past, present, and future. Before you even commit them, that's not right. The sins that are past are the sins that God forgives when you come to him. And it is through the forbearance and the long suffering of God. Then in verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time is righteousness that he might look at this be just and the justifier is judge on the final day is the justifier at this time the savior at this time the redeemer at this time the justifier of him which believeth in Christ, in Jesus. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and instead of going to that white great throne of judgment, He forgives you, He redeems you, and He becomes your justifier. That's why we're looking at the message today. The great judge, or the gracious justifier, which one will He be for you? If you receive him today, he forgives, he cleanses, he saves, he transforms your life, and then you're justified. He is the justifier. But if you neglect the justification, if you reject just the justifier, if you neglect this so great salvation, that the Lord has made available for everyone and you go on until death without salvation then it becomes the great judge the message the great judge of the gracious justifier three things we're looking at number one the judge supreme yet gracious number two the judgment of small and great. Number three, the joy of saints in glory. Let's look at number one. Number one, the judge supreme, yet gracious. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, 
after that we have received the, the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins verse 27 but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fairy indignation which shall devour which shall consume the adversaries adversaries of god adversaries of godliness adversaries of the gospel and then in verse 28 it says he that despised moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses and then in verse 29 how of how much sorrow punishment greater punishment more terrible punishment and more painful punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of god and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace look at that verse it says there are people who are saved and sanctified they backslid they went back to their vomit and instead of coming back and retracing their steps they count the blood of the covenant by which they were sanctified now they count that blood an unholy thing and they have done despite to the spirit of grace the spirit of grace the spirit of god pleading with them that they will come back they neglected they rejected they pushed away and they have done despite unto him and then as the lord is standing before them and pleading with them they tread over the son of god they said get out of my way otherwise if i can't walk out from you then i'll walk on you and still go my way he said those people will receive much sorrow punishment understand when it says the great white throne judgment are for sinners yes for sinners that the believers had been judged at the bema siege yes but we need to explain if you are saved and your sins are put on christ and you remain with the lord and you, let, you don't take those sins back and become sinful again if you remain and you endure unto the end jesus himself said he that endures to the end the same shall be saved but if you say my sins are forgiven i am saved i'm a child of god and then you go back to sinning because of the wrong notion that the sins of the believer had been laid on christ and the believer will not come to judgment anymore on the account on the basis that you do not go back to sin and you do not die as a sinner if you die as a sinner as a backslider if you die as the person that rejected the mercy of god to the last minute you still appear at the white throne judgment of god it says in verse 30 in verse 30 for we know him that has said vengeance belongeth unto me i will recompense says the lord and again the lord shall judge his people verse 31 it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god the judge supreme yet gracious three things we're looking at number one the incorruptible judge of hard-hearted sinners the people who are hardened in sin 
the people whatever reason they have who continue in their project of sinning they love sin and when the warning comes and when the gospel message comes instead of obeying the gospel message they go deeper into sin they go further into sin their hearts are hardened they raise the incorruptible judge of hard-hearted sinners number two the irreproachable judge of haughty sinners they are so proud they don't accept anybody they are higher than the prophet, they are higher than the apostle, they are higher than the Bible, they are higher than the messenger of God, and they look down on everyone. And if you are not going to accept the message from anyone and the people that God has sent, and you are haughty, a haughty, proud, high-minded sinner, there is the judge, the irreproachable judge of haughty sinners. Number three now, there's the immutable justifier of humble souls. He still has mercy and he calls us. He says, if we come, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you are a sinner, if you are a backslider, if you are at the edge, at the periphery, you are neither in nor out, one leg outside, one leg inside, and the Lord is calling you and is saying, we don't know when the Lord will come, and we don't know when the judgment will strike believe today accept today and then there'll be an immediate justification from the immutable justifier of those who are humble humble souls before the lord number one here is the incorruptible judge of hard hearted sinners revelation chapter 20 verse 11 it says and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. They were so afraid they knew they could not stand and there was found no place for them. And then in verse 13, we're told that the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Please understand. The Bible says very clearly, it is appointed unto men who wants to die. And after this, immediately after death, there is judgment. Please understand. Man has three parts the spirit the soul and the body the body is uh, the avenue by which we contact our environment our community and the world the spirit is the part of force and that's the real man really the inner man that's the one that contacts god we commune with God, not with our heart, not with our physical eyes, with our spirit. The soul is the one that has feeling. When, you know, somebody smites you and you feel pain, that's your soul. And when you feel sorrowful, that's your soul. And when you cry, that's your soul. When you feel depressed, that's your soul. The spirit, the soul, and the body. When a believer dies now, immediately the spirit and the soul will go back to God who has given it. And the body is here on earth, is buried in the sea, on la in the land, on the soil, anywhere. And now the unbeliever, if the unbeliever dies now, the spirit and the soul will go to hell. Hell is a place of punishment. Hell is a place of suffering in torment and in fire. That's what Jesus Christ told us about uh, that uh, rich man who died and then uh, Lazarus died. Lazarus was carried by the angels, not his body. His spirit, his soul carried into the presence of God. And then uh, the body was buried. The body remained here on earth, but then at that time when uh, there'll be that final judgment of the whole earth from the first generation of human beings until the final generation then uh, the spirit and the soul 
of the sinner that had been in hell will be brought up from there and then the body that had been in the earth will be joined together and that man will become complete again spirit soul and body all the dead in hell who are suffering the spirit and soul will come and join with their body and hell will be emptied and now because of the final time death has no job to do anymore since the lord told adam and eve that the day you eat of the fruit of that tree thou shalt die death came into action and death has been killing and killing and killing and now final judgment has come hell is emptied and then death you have no other work and death is put to a final death itself and so after that great white throne judgment since hell had been emptied that hell is a compartment of the dead unbelievers they will be will be put into the lake of fire and death you in the lake of fire and satan and the false prophets and the antichrist all in the lake of fire and those some believers all join together now a spirit soul and body in the lake of fire what's the difference between hell fire and the lake of fire in hell fire you only have the spirit the soul of the unbelievers of the sinners who die in their rebellion in their sin in the lake of fire you don't only have spirit and soul you have spirit soul body all joined together to be forever and ever in the lake of fire now god is that incorruptible judge god is the one that makes that final decision and he tells us in daniel chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 9 daniel chapter 7 verse 9 i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days that's god that's the almighty that's the creator of heavens and the earth all those sinners will not have any opportunity to live here on earth why if not for the goodness of the almighty the ancient of days that created them and they have neglected him all through their lives and it says the ancient of days did siege whose garment was white as snow, and the air of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fairy flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Then in verse 10, it says, And a fairy stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and it says ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was said great white throne judgment the judgment was said final judgment the judgment was said inescapable judgment and then the uh, judgment was not like okay i like you okay come to the right hand side you i don't like you come to the not not at all it is done according to what had been written in the books and the books were opened we're looking at romans chapter 2 in romans chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treacherous up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Those who are hard hearted, they don't have any feeling towards Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. They've read the story, they've heard the story how Christ shed his blood, how he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There was no trouble, there was no pain like his pain before all the sins of the world put upon him so that he can be the substitute and suffer for the sins of humanity. But these hard-hearted people, they don't care for the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, after your impenitent heart 
and after your heart hath, you treasure unto yourself, unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And then he tells us in verse 6, it says, Who will render to every man according to his deeds, according to his character, according to his lifestyle, according to his willful action here on earth. This God, the ancient of days, the incorruptible God, the incorruptible judge, it will render to every man according to his deed. And then in verse 7, it says to them, who oh, by patient continuance in well-doing, say for glory and honor, there'll be immortality and eternal life. And then verse 8, in verse 8, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth the truth of salvation comes they do not obey the truth the truth of repentance comes they do not obey the truth the truth of regeneration of newness of life of the possibility of grace coming into our lives turning us around and changing us came unto them the sound doctrine the truth that can move us from earth unto eternity and be in the presence of god forever and ever the truth came unto them they were contentious and they fought against the truth and they, they obey unrighteousness there will be indignation and wrath and then in verse 9 it says tribulation and anguish trouble torment and anguish sorrow and suffering upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the jew first and also of the gentiles then in verse 10 it says but glory honor and peace to every man that walketh good by grace walketh good no man is good by himself only when grace comes only when salvation comes and you turn to the lord and the lord says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone opens the door of his heart unto me i will come in i will sup with him i'll fellowship with him and the end of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior brings grace and he brings strength to obey the word of God and he said to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles in verse 11 he tells us for there is no respect of persons with God there is no respect there's no partiality there's no favoritism. That one is the one that brought, uh, you know, the church or village. No favoritism. That one is the one that started this good thing. Uh, and then all of, all of us are following now. On the basis you continue in righteousness and holiness all the days of your life before the Lord. That's the only way by grace you can be rescued and you can be released from the judgment of God. But... If you say, well, God knows who I am. He knows my name. He knows my worth. He knows my value. He knows who I am. I don't think God will cast anybody like me to hell. And then you continue in evil. You continue in sin. You continue in rebellion against the Lord. It says there is no respect of persons with God. Let's look at number two here. Number two here is the irreproachable judge of the haughty sinner. The haughty sinner. The one that is proud, the one that is incorrigible, and the one that is unrepentant. There is the judgment of God, and when God brings the judgment, you cannot reproach him. You cannot ask the question, why, why did you do that? You must remember he judged Adam and Eve the very first parents of the whole of humanity on earth you must remember he judged Cain you must remember he judged Nadab and Abihu you must remember he judged Korah, Dathan and Abiram you must remember he judged Achan you must remember he judged Ananias and Sapphira you must remember he judged the first treasurer of the church of the New Testament that Judas is carried you must remember many of the people in the Corinthian church many of them fell asleep because of their sin they died in rebellion in sin 
before their time and you understand this judge is the one that judges the herod and the and the pharaohs and the nebuchadnezzars of all time the irreproachable judge of haughty sinners he tells us in hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to the god the judge of all the judge of all the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect in verse 24 it tells us unto jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of abel verse 25 c that she refuses not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away. Do you understand that language? We. The writer of Hebrews includes himself, Paul includes himself, all the apostles include themselves. If anyone turn away from him, and you ought to include yourself, if you turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, he speaks about repentance. Do you turn in or do you turn away? He speaks about regeneration, about the grace of God that comes into our lives, and that grace of God teaches us to be sober to be righteous and to be godly are you turning in your life are you turning away he teaches us that we follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord do you turn in your life and say lord i surrender i give myself to you save me if you are not saved sanctify me if you are saved but if we turn away we turn away our mind we turn away our soul we turn away our our attention from the word of God much more shall not we escape the judgment of God if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven verse 26 whose voice then shook the earth but now he has promised saying yet once more i shake not the earth only but also heaven in verse 27 it says and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaking as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain verse 28 it says therefore wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear serve god with reverence and godly fear now if there is no possibility of going back if there's no possibility of losing your stand in christ if there's no possibility of judgment anymore your savior forever saved and you will not come to judgment anymore anything you do you are by yourself and god is an indulgent god he cannot frown at sin anymore he cannot say why this why that why will there be reverence and godly fear the fear that if you went back to sin and you remained in sin and you died in sin the judgment of god will still be upon you forever that's why he said wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear them verse start verse 29 for our god is a consuming fire the god of eternal security people their god is an indulgent god he doesn't frown at anything once you are saved you are forever saved but for the people who are new testament believers for our god is a consuming fire that's why we know that judgment day is coming that final judgment day will come but the grace is available now that brings us to number three here and it's the immutable justifier of humble souls in james chapter 4 reading from verse 6 
but he giveth more grace. He gives grace at salvation, but he giveth more grace, the grace to endure all temptation. He giveth more grace, the grace that was sustaining you, and you will remain abiding in the Lord. He giveth more grace, the grace to be sanctified, and the grace to serve the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. He has given grace, he'll give grace again, he'll give grace again. He giveth more grace, where, wherefore he says, is God resisteth the proud. God resisteth the proud. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, there he says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. If you have um, backsliding, humble yourself. Don't, don't start saying, I did this, I did that, I'm this, I'm that. Who are you before God? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we'll read from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 6. It tells us, and the Lord thy God is ready thy God when you are born again, is thy God when you have come out of Egypt, and you're on your way to Canaan, the promise land is the Lord thy God when he has forgiven your sin and there's no condemnation now because you are not living in sin anymore it's the Lord thy God when you are a man you're a woman you're a boy a girl in Christ all things have passed away all things have become new and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart after salvation there's sanctification after conversion, there is the circumcision of heart, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. And when he does that, and he takes the depravity out of your nature, he takes the fallen nature out of your nature, what then will happen? You will love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and that thou mayest live look at verse 15 it says see i search before thee this day life and good death and evil he wants you to choose you can choose whether you want me to wait for you on the final day to be your judge or you want to reconcile with me now as your justifier I put it before you. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. You know what the Lord is saying? He's saying, I'm not going to impose eternal life on you. You have to make your choice. I'm not going to impose on you salvation, regeneration, new life. You have to make your choice. I'm not going to impose on you the abundance of the grace of God. You have to make a choice. I can be your justifier today. I can be your judge on the final day. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and causing their fortunes life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Ezekiel chapter 18, we're looking at verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son and of the daughter is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's your choice. It's your choice. Whether you live or whether you die, whether it's your justifier to forgive your sin now and to set you free from the chains and the shackles of sin, it can be your justifier or it can be your judge if you, re if you reject the justification in verse 30. It tells us, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to 
to his way he says the lord god repent after he said i will judge you he said but you can still make your choice and you can repent repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin in verse 31 he says cast away from you all your transgressions not only some sins okay that sin landed me in trouble i'm going to just give up that one that sin was discovered by my wife i will never do that again and she you know she has a high blood pressure and that thing almost claimed her life that i did i'll not do that again but these other ones that are private and nobody knows about this one i'll keep on to this there's no forgiveness there's no salvation for those who are selective in confessing and forsaking their sin cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel look at the language of the Lord why will you die I don't want you to die but I am judge and I will judge you but for you to escape that judgment you will turn away from your sin in verse 32 it says in verse 32 for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies says the Lord God wherefore turn yourselves and live ye we'll come to point number two now point number two is the judgment of small and great revelation chapter 20 we're looking at verse 12 in revelation chapter 20 verse 12 and I saw the dead small and great I saw, now please pay attention, don't allow people to confuse your, your heart, your mind with what they dreamt of and they saw. You cannot compare them with John, the beloved apostle. You cannot compare them with John, that God gave this revelation to signified by an angel and the lord revealed all that will happen from that time until the end of time and when you have learned the word of god in the old testament and new testament and something had not been mentioned in any of those uh, parts of the bible then somebody comes to you he says it's a prophet he says it's a christian he says you know this is what he saw that he saw many people and they were in hell because of this and that and we check off from the bible we cannot find anything like that what a shame that somebody will become afraid of somebody's dream come back to the bible and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and other another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work now on what basis will the dead be judged they'll be judged by what is in the book of god and the book of god as the bible in the last chapter the lord has said don't add anything to it god has revealed everything he wants to reveal and don't subtract don't take away anything from it he has revealed everything that he needs to reveal there's judgment coming for small and great and then in verse 13 we're told and the sea gave up the dead which were in need and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man they were judged look up here the dead body with no spirit and no soul cannot be judged it's corpse it's dead it has no feeling slap it pinch it pierce it no feeling cannot be judged even if you throw it into fire it's burnt up it doesn't have any feeling any pain any torture any torment but when the spirit and the soul 
come back into the body and it now becomes a complete man a complete woman a complete boy a complete girl it is the spirit we have within the body now that makes us feel pain it is the soul we have in the body now that makes us feel pain and so the dead body is in the grave is in the sea or is cremated and burnt up but then when there's resurrection the resurrection of the jaws and the resurrection of the unjaws and the spirit and the body and the soul and they're all together now they are the judge every man according to their works small and great three things here number one the inescapable judgment of corrupt small and great number two the interminable judgment the judgment that will never terminate the judgment is pronounced and they are sent to the lake of fire and they're forever and ever there the interminable judgment of condemned small and great and now to escape that judgment is the indispensable justification of converted small and great let's look at number one the inescapable judgment the inescapable judgment of corrupt small and great look at that verse 12 again and i saw the dead small and great old and young little and big small and great there are assemblies there are churches where they say the youth, the children, are the church of tomorrow. No, they're the church of today as well. When judgment comes, the Lord will not say they're small, they're young. There are churches where the small, the young, the little ones, all they do now is go there and exchange letters during the service a change what they call love notes during the service all they're interested in in those churches is that they drum and dance and what they call worship they're not worshiping god they're worshiping their body they're worshiping their dancing they're worshiping what they like there are churches where they don't teach those young people, the children and the youth and the young adults there, they don't teach them the way of salvation, the word of repentance and the word of restitution and the word of righteousness. They say they're still young, you know, children are children, but God says when the judgment comes, the judgment will come on the small and the great they will stand before god and the books will be open all that those young people are doing they know it's wrong if a little child steals you know it's wrong if a little child ill treats and beats the junior brother or sister they know it's wrong if the little child will take a knife and then they plunge it into another person they know it's wrong if a little child boy or girl will abuse and insult the father or the mother and you know because it's young and let me be their parents have indulged them they know it's wrong there's judgment for the young there's judgment for the adults if a child in the church any church our church you see i'm still young and they will do this and will do that and they commit sin and they say the pastor cannot do anything against that because if the pastor talks about it will take his word we know how to use the social media will paint him black in the social media well that is seen as well and you don't know when the judgment of god will come it will come suddenly when many people are not prepared and it says and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open everything you do whether you are young you are old everything you do whether you are a child or you are the parents everything you do they go into the book of records and 
when you repent and you are born again, then it will blot out your transgression. It will blot out all the sins that are written there and it will transfer your records and your name into the book of life for the old, for the young, for the great, for the small, for the parents, and for the children. But if the judgment day comes and there's no repentance, the judgment day comes, there's no change of heart, the judgment day comes and there's no salvation, the books will be open and then the Lord will say you know there will be no hurry because eternity is there uh, still to spend and God will say come on here look at this and this and this and this true what do you expect now then there's judgment and then you're sent to the other side before that happens I pray there will be repentance amen. let me hear church amen, amen small and great look at chapter 11 verse 18 chapter 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is calm can you imagine a nation being angry against god a community angry against god your family angry against god you angry against god well that's the story and the dead and it says and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name small and great small and great can fear the name of the lord small and great can give themselves and yield themselves to the lord small and great can repent and small and great can pray with conviction and with real deep contrition and give themselves to the lord and be saved but those small and great if they do not repent and they are part of the people that destroy the earth and destroy other people on earth that thou shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth i pray god will help every one of us to have the right attitude and to approach his word in the proper way in jesus name we're looking at ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 remember now thy creator in the days of thy Youth, while you are still young, in the days of the youth, remember him as the creator. Remember him as the one that so loved you and gave his only begotten son so that you will not perish but believe on him. Remember him who is willing to forgive everything that you have done and is willing to turn your life around and then to serve him so that on the final day judgment will not come upon you. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And now in verse 7, verse 7 of that um, chapter 12, then at the point of death, then shall the doors return to the earth as it was that the body at the point of death the dust the body will return back to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it now in verse 13 in verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments but this is the whole duty of, of man verse 14 it says for god shall bring every work every utterance every conversation every deed every action all that man has done that has not been forgiven that has not been cleansed that was covered up 
you see there are people all they are trying to do is cover up their sin so that man cannot see they're not uh, interested in God cleansing them blotting out their sin they have done that I want to protect my name if that comes out it will tarnish my name that name you are trying to protect when the judgment day comes in the view of all people all over the earth in all generations will be brought out and then you'll be told you are a big zero a big hypocrite you are a secret sinner let that sin be cleansed now let that light change now while there is chance but on that final day god will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil look at number two here number two here is the interminable judgment of condemned small and great it tells us in John chapter 3 verse 18 John chapter 3 verse 18 it is at the words of Jesus he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed on the name the only begotten son of God and then in verse 19 it says and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil why do people stay in a place where they are preaching false doctrine, where they look at the Bible and they turn the Bible upside down, and they know that, that that's not, you know, their pastor has not interpreted that word correctly, and they love it and they stay there because their deeds are evil why are some young people running away from a church like this their parents brought them and they have been here from the children church now they come to secondary school level or maybe university a level and then they decide they're going to go to a drumming dancing assembly somewhere you know why the deeds are evil they have not been born again and because they are not born again they do not like i mean those who go away like that to false places they do not appreciate the sound word of god this is their condemnation that light is come into the world and men lord darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil verse 36 in verse 36 he that believeth on the son has everlasting life he that believeth not on the son shall not see life but the wrath of God, the judgment of God, the indignation of God, the punishment coming from God abideth on him. We come to number three here. We can still repent and we can still call upon the Lord and the Lord can still forgive and set us free and justify us and put all the blame, all the punishment on Christ who died for us the indispensable justification of converted transformed saved regenerated small and great we're looking at um, Rebe at uh, revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 we're reading from verse romans chapter 3 we're reading from verse 24 romans chapter 3 verse 24 
being justified freely by his grace that's the grace that justifies us freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus the justification comes as we believe on the lord as we hand over and surrender our lives to the lord in verse 25 it says whom god has set for to be a propitiation through faith in his blood he shed that blood when i see the blood i will pass over you what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin whom god has set forth to be a propitiation the atonement the covering and the cleansing through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission for the removal for the forgiveness for the cleansing of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God verse 26 in verse 26 to declare I say at this time at this time at that time when the judgment day comes will be too late at that time at the great white throne judgment that will be too late at this time at this time of grace at this dispensation of grace it says to declare i say at this time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. As you believe today, he'll take all the sins away in Jesus' name. And then Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 2, it tells us by whom also we have we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Look at verse 8 there. In verse 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in verse 9, it says much more than being justified, being justified. This is indispensable justification as it brings us to himself and we're converted much more than being justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. In verse 18, it tells us, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that is of Christ, of our Savior, of that final sacrifice, of the fire of our substitute, the only acceptable substitute to the Lord, it says, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, reading there from verse 19. Acts, chapter 3, reading from verse 19. It tells us, repent ye therefore to be forgiven, repent ye therefore to be saved, repent ye therefore to have the grace of God in your life that will make you escape the final judgment, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. There's no blotting out of sin until repentance has taken place. Lord, I will not do that anymore. Grant me your grace. I did that in my foolishness. I did that in my care, in my carelessness. Lord, I plead. I'm sorry. I'm sorrowful for the sin I've committed. And I will not return to my vomit anymore. I need your grace. I know that Christ died for me. It is as we confess that and we believe that in our heart that then the sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come 
come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 26, he tells us unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. That's what he wants to do for the small and the great. That's the salvation for the young and for the old. It's not just religion. It's not just churchianity. It's not just, you know, I come to worship. There must be that definite experience of salvation. You must be able to tell the day, the time, you turned away from your sin and you turned unto the Lord and he took your sin away. And then the Spirit of God bore witness in your heart. You are now a child of God and you are ready for heaven. Shall the trumpet sound any time unto you first God have been raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you what's the blessing in turning away every one of you from his iniquity we're coming to point number three now point number three is the glory of saints the, the joy of saints in glory joy joy everlasting will be yours will be mine will be ours in jesus name revelation chapter 20 verse 6 it tells us blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of god and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years and then after that and then after the great white throne judgment forever and ever you'll be with the Lord we shall be with the Lord in Jesus name chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 1 Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea follow the whole revelation all those who drowned in the sea and their bodies were not recovered all the bodies will be recovered and they'll be judged hell would also all the people that were in hell they would also be removed from there to go to the lake of fire and the sea itself all the ocean were told that now there will be no more sea look at verse 2 in verse 2 it tells us and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and then in verse 3 it tells us it says and I had a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and shall be their God I will be there Look at verse 4. It says in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Somebody over there will say, Amen. Amen. You know, there are people that wonder, Why should I cry? Why should we ever have tears? What's God going to wipe away? You've never had any sorrow. You've never had any pain. You've never had any challenge. You've never been on a crossroad. And you've never shed any tears. Nothing has ever bothered your life. Everybody just cleared for you anytime you are coming. And there was nothing to cry about. Then you'll be the isolated one when we get over there. But all the rest of all, if you have ever cried if you have ever been sorrowful if any painful thing ever happened to you and God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away 
verse 5 it says in verse 5 and he shall he that sat upon the throne says behold I make all things new behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful whatever you hear from other people the people that just want to and they use the name of God God said God spoke God did this and God revealed to me they use the name of God God will judge the liars on the final day but now here are the words of the Lord these words are true and faithful and in verse 6 it tells us and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and omega the beginning and the end and i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely and then verse seven he that overcometh shall, shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son you'll be there i said you'll be there and there'll be joy forevermore in Jesus' name. The joy of saints in glory. Three things. Number one, the everlasting joyfulness of the sanctified in glory. Number two, the endless joylessness of sufferers for their godlessness. Number three, the enduring journey of saints to glory. Number one, everlasting joy. Where are you? You're inherited in Jesus' name. Everlasting joyfulness of the sanctified in glory. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rejoice rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven after when you are saved god himself writes your name in heaven my name is written there i said my name is written there in that book so white and fair in his kingdom my name is written there i pray your name will be written there remain there and be sustained there forever in jesus name rejoice not because you know you are healed of sickness that's good but the body will go to the grave eventually it is not because you know we cast out devils that's good but if those people if they are not born again they'll still be buried and then they'll go to judgment but rejoice because you the preacher you the pastor you the soul winner you the christian you the born again brother sister small great young and old rejoice because your names are written in heaven and for such people there will be joy everlasting for your life in jesus name Isaiah chapter 35 we're reading from verse 8 Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men do fools shall not err therein verse 9 it says in verse 9 no lion shall be there no lion shall be there you know when it says lion the kingdom of god is not made for animals and the path the narrow path that leads to the eternal life is not made for animals he's talking about people that have the iron lion-like nature the cruel the wicked when they get angry it doesn't matter who they are angry at and they don't care for the consequences they are angry they are angry like a lion they can pounce of somebody and almost tear the person in pieces he didn't obey me 
I said it should go this direction. It didn't go that direction. And then the lion-like lion -like nature will come from within. And when you look at their face, even their face looks like the face of a lion. Those people that do not kill that disease, that infirmity, that iniquity of anger, they will spend eternity in hellfire. No lion shall be there. There are people, they get angry with their wives and they take a negative decision. And they said, if I am the child of my father, if it's my mother that gave back to me, I declare I don't have anything to do with this wife, woman, until I die. I will show her I can keep myself and control myself because of that thing you did. Forget about me. And they're serious. And their anger is bottled up and is sustained. And anybody can beg them, anybody can appeal to them. They say, please, don't wade into this matter. Once I take a decision, I'm angry at this woman. I don't love this woman. Even though I will not divorce, even though we're living together, I'll make her to suffer for what she has done and the butcher of that anger. And they say, when we're thinking about heaven and singing about heaven, they say, heaven is my home. I am glad I am going to heaven. I am glad my name is there. You're deceiving yourself. And if you're the woman that does that, you've taken a decision in anger against your husband. And you say, me? Oh, this, this man will know. He will know that I am a woman of difference. And once I say, here is it, that is it. Whatever he does, however he pleads, he may send his father, his mother to me to come and beg me. I make up my mind, I am angry. You know, some people, you even ask them, you say, uh -uh, the way you are looking, are you angry? Of course, you can tell I'm angry. They tell you. And it says, no lion shall be there. If your goal is, going, is to get to heaven, if your goal is to escape hellfire forever and ever, ease up and forget and forgive all those sins and face the Lord Jesus Christ who has the grace and the power to erase that thing out of your life. Cease doing evil and sees manifesting the nature of the lion because heaven is made for those who are converted those who are transformed those whose lives are totally changed and there is no hypocrisy and there's nothing secret they are hiding under the carpet no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up therein it shall not be found there but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk therein and then in verse 10 it says and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy, everlasting joy, everlasting joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I did hear a good amen. amen. You know, if you remember when you came to the Lord and you had the message of salvation, and you repented, understanding or kneeling down, and you give yourself to the Lord, you didn't know any other thing. A man, a woman did not stand between you and God. You just said, I give myself unreservedly unto the Lord and this journey of life I start today I'm going to finish with the Lord now preaching did not come in and ministry did not come in work did not come in full-time work did not come in partial my part-time work did not come in profession did not come in all you thought about you thought about Christ and Calvary and salvation and then I will get to heaven 
after salvation, all these sins that came in, and when this is not done this way, you get angry, remove that. That person came in, and because of the way he stands, and because of the way he bends, and because of the way he moves, then you get angry. That was not there, then take away that one. So that your everlasting joy, nobody will hinder that everlasting joy in Jesus' name. I look at Hebrews chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 9 Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 it says but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowd with glory and honor and th that he by the grace of God shall taste death for every man look at verse 10 it says for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory that's the goal that's the goal that's the goal of our salvation don't do a bog down with anything here on earth that he may bring many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering verse 11 for he for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren number two now number two is the endless joylessness of sufferers for their ungodliness in revelation chapter 20 verse 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death verse 15 and whosoever was not found whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire when the children of israel returned from captivity at the time of Ezra, many people offered themselves, they wanted to serve the Lord. And then Ezra said, Hold on, and they checked the books. And there were people excited, willing, skillful, happy, wanting to join those who rendered service to the Lord that time of Ezra because their names were not found written in the book they were cast off the same thing happened at the time of nehemiah there were people that were excited i'm an israelite and this is my tribe they couldn't find their record in the books that were written they were cast off now it's going to be very serious that somebody has named the name of christ somebody has many copies of the bible at home somebody has been connected with all this message social media and the cd and dvd somebody has been going to retreat has been going to congress has been going to all this place somebody had devoted his whole life full time working for the lord and then to come to that final day and the lord goes through out the books he was saved before but his backsliding he was saved before but he's raised up a car he was saved before but he's now dancing before the car that aaron has made and he has come back from the lord the just shall lay by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that endures to the end the same shall be saved because thou sayest i have need of nothing i am rich i have this i have that and you do not know that uh, you are wretched and miserable and naked and blind repent otherwise if you remain lukewarm i'll spew you out of my mouth and the lord is saying remember the people that came out of egypt later the lord rejected and those people that did not keep on believing they perished in the wilderness and 
those people their names will not be in the book of life and whosoever an ex-christian ex-believer former believer but now a backslider a secret sinner a fornicator an adulterer a person that is playing with lie lying lying is now is a is a lifestyle whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire and the word of god says in revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 10 and it said the smoke of their torment ascendeth all forever and ever look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says and the smoke of their torment ascendeth all forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name but the chance is still for us today that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and today is the day of god's mercy and the day of god's grace and the day of abundant love and i pray his mercy and his grace and his compassion will reach out to every one of us in jesus name number three here is the enduring journey of saints to glory we're looking at uh, psalm 73 psalm 73 and i'm reading here from verse 24 psalm 73 we're looking at verse 24 it tells us here it says thou shalt guide me thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory thou shalt guide me guide me guide me you are saved as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the children of god you are a child of god and every way any step you want to take no matter how much money is there no matter popular people they send to you take the decision they pull you here they pull you there please allow me i want to be guided by the lord as many as are led and guided by the lord they shall be saved thou shalt guide me with thy counsel with thy counsel with thy counsel anybody there so proud you don't need counsel from the lord through his servants anymore i know what i'm doing I know where I'm going. I know what decision I've taken. Do you really know? Do you know everything? Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Look at verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. We are on a journey, and I pray this journey will finish well your journey will finish well my journey will finish well now if our journey is going to finish well how do we act step by step day after day in this journey and look at journey J join the chariot taking saints to glory you must start the journey that way join the chariot get born again get converted come into the flock of the people of god there's a chariot and he's taking the saints of god to glory j join the chariot taking saints to glory O occupy in the propagation and progress of the gospel while you're on your journey on your journey to glory on your journey to the promised land on your journey to the presence of god occupy in the propagation and the progress of the gospel you use your gifts for the good of others use your gifts for others good what will benefit them? 
what will help them to get to life eternal what will make them lift their body the gift you have don't you so give to distress anyone destroy anyone discourage anyone while you're on your journey to glory land make sure that you're an encouragement to others who are also on their way to glory are remember his provision of sufficient grace as we move on in this journey remember remember it's provision for or sufficient grace whatever you are going through my grace is sufficient for you and not your the vision of the everlasting glory whatever trouble you go through here remind yourself that there is uh, going to be a great reward on the final day not show that vision you know where you are going and you know where you have started and you know the road the path of righteousness and holiness that gets there not show the vision of everlasting of the everlasting glory he endure today's pain for the greater gain no gain but without pain no pain no gain so endure today's pain whatever is happening any day and don't let let that make you look back or think i'm going back i can't you know stay there anymore i can't do this anymore this one is too much while you're on your journey you endure today's pain for the greater gain and why yoke inseparably was the lord of glory himself and yourself yourself and and himself your hand in his hand holding you without me you can do nothing but with him you can climb every mountain you can go through any river you can face any challenge you can defeat any enemy anything that stands between you and glory you will overcome in jesus name i will be an overcomer i will be an overcomer i will be an overcomer you yoke yourself inseparably with the lord of glory the Lord will never leave you. The Lord will never forsake you. And the Lord will not allow you to die and to finish in the middle of your journey. You will endure to the end in Jesus' name. And when the saints go marching in, praise God, I see you there. You'll be part of the saints marching into glory in Jesus' name. Will you be there? Will I be there? Where are you? Tell the Lord. Rise up now and tell the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I will be there. You will be there. You will be there. You must make sure nothing hinders you from that endless, eternal, everlasting joyfulness.